I blame you tomorrow for some test. <laughs> hey, if you want to name it after me, uh, or name it after me, you should probably name it after Sprana. <laughs> name it after who? You can name it after me, but uh, I mean, I didn't make it up, so. <laughs> the Mountain Dew Group. What? The Mountain Dew Group. Mountain Dew Group. <laughs> it's funny. That needs to be a thing. <laughs> All right, guys. He's dirty. All right, let's begin with the word of prayer. Dear Lord, I just thank you for this day, and I pray that you'll uh, help me to not be very tired as I lead this lesson and to just be clear headed and explain things clearly. Uh, I just thank you again for this opportunity to study algebraic topology. I pray that you'll uh, bless this time that we do so. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. You guys got the Jerry this Saturday, huh? Mm -hmm. And then it's over. Yeah. Yeah. We can just go back to studying math rather than studying the Jerry. <laughs> and my two online classes. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry about that. That's okay. All right, so last time at the very end, we defined this uh, mesh of a, of a simplex. Uh, or, uh, yeah, of a chain. That's right. Um, so the mesh of a gamma, where gamma is the sum of mj, sigma j, where all these mjs are not zero, then the mesh of gamma is equal to the supremum of the diameter of the diameters of sigma j of the standard on simplex. Um, and then he says it follows immediately from uh, sort of like the opposite of what you'd want to strain spaghetti. You know, like if you can imagine defining a critical size for spaghetti, you want to find the minimum distance between any. I mean, this is exactly the wrong idea mm -hmm. for the mesh. Sorry. But it is very helpful. So no, okay. Define the strainer. Prove it to me. Gamma. The strainer. <laughs> Subspace weekly in space, and you have gamma, then uh, the subdivision of gamma, the mesh of the subdivision of gamma is going to be less than or equal to n over n plus 1 of uh, the mesh of gamma. And so I'm not sure if I really like proved it well, but I'll, I'll kind of like explain how I got there. Um, so theorem 2.9, um, something that told us like a lot of like properties of simplexes and various centers. And so I think like the essential. Uh, Part of the theorem is that, like, for all, uh, for every vertex pi, then the distance from v to pi is going to be less than or equal to n over n plus 1, the diameter of sigma, I think. For, I go back to it. Oh, they call it S, but, uh, but yeah, so that's what we for that, okay, so, so we have mesh of SD gamma is equal to mesh of um, gamma, star of, or gamma, sorry. I just found the gamma of SD delta, and is equal to mesh sum of mj, sigma j, that's math of sc delta, which is equal, so we talked about like the subdivision of delta can be written as some, uh, alright, it's ki, ki tau i, so these are going to be all the little, like little triangles, for example, when we're looking at the two simplex. Uh, so that's going to be equal to mesh of sum over i and j of m i m j k i uh, sigma j tau j tau i by properties of the induced map. Um, right, so that's equal to the supremum over i and j of the diameters of sigma j to i of the n-simplex. 
Okay. And I don't really like prove it formally, um, but so this, this is just like sig uh, these uh, sigmas restricted to the smaller triangles and or I mean smaller and simplexes. Um, and so, but like all every uh, every one of these n simplexes is going to be formed from like one of the vertices with one of the with one of the barycenters of either the the actual simplex or like one of the the boundaries or like the boundaries of boundaries. Um, and so this is always going to be less than or equal to um, to uh, n over n plus one of the diameter of the actual. Uh, which one's sigma? I think. Oops. To the greatest diameter. Which is by definition uh, n around plus one. Actually, yeah. Hmm. I don't know. It didn't seem like quite as obvious as he kind of just like it. <laughs> well, um, so <laughs> that's sort of a recurrent. Thing. Yeah, so that's just what he does. <laughs> and then, but having that, we can kind of like repeat the process. So if we uh, do compositions of multiple of these uh, subdivision. Uh, so it's the uh, same thing, yes, so if you clean space, gamma to find n chain, uh, then I'm just going to write the main huh. property sd. Yeah. So composed of itself q times of gamma. Uh, it's less than or equal to n over n plus 1 to the q. Huh. So, that pretty much follows like just from induction. Um, just get repeating it so each time you get another power of n over n plus one. Huh. And so the nice thing about that is that since n over n plus one is less than one, uh, it goes to zero. So you can always get um, a mesh that's small enough, uh, it's close enough to uh, what we're looking for. So it says. So it says we only we only need to show that the inclusion from S star X one plus X star X two. Oh. Something wrong? Mm. What is that? Maybe I'm dumb. Why does N over N plus one go to zero? Oh Q goes to infinity. I'm yes, sorry, I was thinking infinity. of a rather different limit. Ah uh, come yeah. on. <laughs> sorry, it's Q goes to infinity. Yeah, it's, it's bueno. It's very bueno. Yeah. So. I gotcha. So now we're so on 6.16. So we have if x1, x2 subspaces of x with what we're starting. We're always going with with the excision uh, x equals interior of x1 and yeah, interior of x2. Um, and if sigma is and simplex of n. Oh, sorry, x. Here you go, Daniel. You should use a black marker. That blue is about impossible to see. Oh, yeah. I just should I redo it or should I? No, no, you're fine. You're fine. You keep going. Just you go on with black. Here you go. Mm -hmm. Oh, you got one. Okay. Yep. This is still blue. Or should I just? No, that's worse. <laughs> here's, here's one. Thank you. Probably good. So then there exists an integer q, uh, or, yeah, q greater than 1, uh, such that um, sd to the q of sigma is an element of sn x1 plus sn x2. Okay. And so proof, since Sigma is continuous. The inverse images of the interiors um, are open. Uh, 
so that's um, open cover. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Uh, delta N. Okay. Uh, since delta N is compact metric, this open cover has the bag number. Which means that whenever uh, x, y, delta n uh, satisfy x minus y less than lambda, um, there exists i equals to 1 or 2 uh, such that sigma inverse, sorry, x, i interior of xi um, that contains both x and y. So. I don't do that. <laughs> okay. That's just the definition of the little big number. Um, so so we choose, uh, you can probably see where this is going, very analysis-y, such that n over n plus 1 to the q is less than lambda. Um, I guess it says less than the diameter. Oh, sorry. Times the diameter less than that. Okay, we're good. Uh, which we can do because this goes to zero. Um, and since the identity is an n simplex, uh, theorem six point fifteen, uh, what we just proved, mm -hmm. says that. Because the mesh is going to be the supremum of this, and since the supremum is less than lambda, then each one of them is going to be less than lambda. Okay, it says. Project. Okay, therefore, tau j standard uh, simplex is going to be a subset of uh, sigma inverse of xi. So, um, for some i, it's really like whichever one that Tajay is actually going to be in, I think. Hmm. Okay, I'll, I'll erase.
You guys doing good? Keep it up? <laughs> I think so. Okay. I'm a little... Can you see what it says? <laughs> oh yeah, you're fine. I've, I've been reading in here. Okay. Okay, so... Actually, this proof up. So it says... SD is if you have sigma is equal to this map of sigma SD to the Q of delta n is equal to uh, sigma star. Okay, that's supposed to be a star. It's That's kind of what we had talked about before, yeah. uh, which is equal to the sum of mj sigma tau j. Hmm. Okay, therefore, sigma tau j. For the specific eye that we uh, that we wanted, okay. After collecting terms, so this so it's either going to end up in x one, uh, the interior of x one, or the interior of x two. So it can be written. So this, this, this argument, these sub i's, you could put i equal to 1 and do the argument, right? Mm -hmm. Or yeah. you could put i equal to 2 and do the argument. Right. Or you could also do the argument for 1 and then say, oh, his argument for 2 is similar. Yeah, I mean, but each of these tau's is going to go to a specific one. Oh. So it's just like that they go to one or the other. Uh, one or the other of these interiors. So that's why we didn't split the proof like I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because it depends on which tau. Um, okay. Yeah, hmm. where? Let me see. It's, an, it's, a chain, it's a chain in SNXI. I will say, I don't remember this LeBay number. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure that there's another way you could do okay, it. What, what's that saying? Since lambda n is a compact metric, this open cover had LeBay numbered lambda. I guess what, my question actually is just what's a LeBay number? Yeah, well, he defines it right afterwards. It's a number such that, like, if oh. if you have two elements of two par uh, two parts of um, the n simplex, then the both um, they'll both be in the same inverse image of the like in the same set of the open cover. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. <clears throat> so whenever they're sufficiently close to one another, they have to be in the same inverse image. Right. And the moment we've all been waiting for. Huh. Your perfect decision, guys. All right, you ready? Which isn't to say that the inverse images are disconnected. Is it? I mean, is X the disjoint union of interior of X1 and interior of X2? I don't think so. I think that would only happen if X was um, a disconnected space. Yeah. It doesn't say that there is a unique I. Oh, yeah, yeah, I guess. There's just an I. So that's fine. Right. Nice. Yeah. You could have a situation so where X and Y are in the inverse image of, like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just saying. It's fine. Yeah, we're just trying to show that it can be really nice. Right, right, right. Some of these two. Sorry, Daniel, okay. I'm just trying to... Yeah, no, that's, that's good, because I'm not sure if I'm really interested. Okay. Yeah. All right, now we're finally getting another one, too. Yay. Let me cut it out. You're right, you're right. Maybe the third time we've used that pun.
never too late to, to apologize a joke. Establish that that sum of uh, s star of x and s star of, well whatever x one and x two play the role of your mm -hmm. right so we're trying to show this in case so um, in other words we're trying to show that data n which is this is some decent map um, from h n s star x one plus s star X two to H N of X, um, which is you know H N of S star of X is an isomorphism. Okay, so so we define this um, induced by the inclusion. Um, okay, so it says. If gamma i an n chain of x i <coughs> for one of these, um, and gamma one plus gamma two is a cycle in a sub in a subcomplex. Um, the subcomplex. So here, it's just like regular homology class. Here, uh, we don't want to use the same uh, notation because we're talking about this subcomplex. Uh, so it's not like a so it's, it's using the bracket, brackets, yeah. bracket mm -hmm. for the class on the one side yeah. and the class for the other side. Wow. Yeah. Huh. I'm oh, sorry. Why is it used for the prime line? So I'm trying to show two things. Show it's an isomorphism. So <laughs> Oh, that just because he has to use primes. Yeah, that would make you, make you happier. Let's see here. All right, so let's... What do these topologists have against writing theta of bracket gamma 1 plus gamma 2 equals class of gamma 1 plus gamma 2? What? It's not that, yeah, it's like almost Why? easier to do. Why not? Why not write that? Wait, what does he write instead? Theta Perhaps colon yeah. this maps to that. Oh. Right, so. Oh, right. Yeah. I guess it's I guess it's because they find the extra pair of parentheses that actually it's kind of well, I mean, uh, I guess it's not incorrect, but typically you'll see that notation for denoting domain and codomain, not actually defining what the function is. Well, yeah. But this is uh, defining the rule of the function, I think. Yeah. <coughs> All right, so we're trying to show it's subjective. So we take yeah. an element of Hn of x, so class of z, mm -hmm. um, and then 
by theorem 6.16 we just proved, so there exists a Q such that SD, of Q, SD to the Q of Z is equal to gamma 1 plus gamma 2 for some gamma 1 uh, in SN of X1, gamma 2 in S2, SN of X2. Okay. Um, Z is a cycle. Jeez. Just looking at the class. Um, and SDQ is a chain map. No, I'll just write that. Um, See why that is? Is it because of a diagram and a commute commuting diagram of some sort? Yeah, so it's like kind of like <clears throat> you can write uh, the boundary of SDQ of Z. It's going to be like SD boundary SDQ minus one uh -huh. Z. You know equals SDQ Q boundary of Z. You can just keep moving these. Uh, because it's a chain map, you can just keep moving these boundaries. And around. the fact that Z is a cycle eventually yeah. gives you zero, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I think you can. Yeah, I'll just surface that. You guys still want to do, do black or? Do you, have, do you have the juice? The juice? I got the juice. Got the juice. Yeah, you got the juice. Oh, you got it. Okay. Yeah. cannibalize a week in here and wrap some things up, I think. It's inevitable, but that can wait. Alright, almost there, so... We'll put Daniel to work on his paper. <laughs> uh, it's your paper. <laughs> Stupid Jerry. Why can't that be offered every month or something? It's very really annoying. It's, it is very, very... <sighs> right, so it just showed this is a cycle, so... The homology class is... Uh, I really do wish there were t more tests like this in math. Like, So you could go take a, take a linear algebra test and prove that you're certified for abstract linear algebra. Mm. Like, forget about credits at institutions. Like, <laughs> let a independent board of elite linear algebraists decide what the test is and put everyone through the gauntlet. Raise the bar. Divorce yourself from inane things like accreditation and so forth. Study math in the wild. Embrace an apprenticeship form of learning. Like, you don't go to school, you find a master. You can go learn from him. You mow his yard. You know, babysit his children. Whatever it takes. And then he will, trampolines. he will share. Yeah, build trampolines, for example. And then he will share with you the map. Okay, so we take the mapping of theta. Oh yes, of this, yes. I guess we should this gamma one plus gamma two that we found, and so that's equal to the class gamma one plus gamma two. Uh, but again, this gamma two is SD to the Q of Z. <laughs> sorry, go on. Oh, sorry, but SD is uh, <coughs> the standard definition from SD is the identity. So mm -hmm. standard definition, yeah. <laughs> um, it's, uh, subdivision. Um, so that's just going to be class of Z. But that's what we're looking for. Show it's surjective, so we're good there. Um, and then injective. Yeah. Um, so 
this this class is going to hmm. as an element of Oy. kernel. I have to change the kernel this year. Goodness gracious. Therefore, by definition of theta, class of gamma 1 plus gamma 2 is equal to 0. exists beta element of n plus 1 chains of x I think, yeah, with partial beta equals gamma 1 plus gamma 2. Wait, it's not allowed. I can use this boundary. Yeah, see how we got that. Mm -hmm. so it's just, it's just Isn't that because it's zero? So that means it has to be a boundary? Does that mean it has to be a sign? Well, well, I said by lemma uh, 6.16. Oh. Oh, it looks right. Like. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm back on the last thing. Never mind. You're on to the next line. By lemma 6.16. So I six. think they're just stuck. Oh. I'm trying to show how yeah, this shows this is an expert. boundary. So you just showed it's a it's cycle, beta, right? The boundary beta equal to gamma 1 plus gamma 2. Oh, sorry. No, no, this is equal to 0. That means it's boundary. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, sorry. I'm trying to put the mic there. Okay, so that means you have something that. Uh, yeah, so the boundary of beta is equal to gamma plus gamma oh, 2. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm an idiot. Um, by lemma 6.16. Yeah. There exists Q greater than equal to 1. Such that. <laughs> SD to Q of beta. Is equal to beta 1 plus beta 2 where beta 1 and beta 2, or beta i is an element of Sn plus 1 xi. So it's not that beta is equal to beta 1 plus beta 2, it's that the Q subdivision, yeah, exactly. the beta is beta 1 plus beta 2. Mm -hmm. But it's that tells us that tells us that the boundary of beta 1 plus beta 2 is equal to the boundary of SD to the Q SD to the Q of beta which is equal to I'm sorry, partial beta no just kidding, we don't know that's all, just beta Because this is a chain, uh, chain map, that means it's the SD to the Q of boundary beta, which is SD to the Q of gamma 1 plus gamma 2. Okay, yeah, because it's a chain map. Uh, therefore, the class. Okay. Yeah, now we now we discover why he's using class and bracket notation in this proof. <laughs> because he has to say this. He has equality of the classes, but he doesn't have equality right. of the classes of the classes. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, the class of the the other kind of yeah, class of the, the same representatives. Kind of class, so that's equal to zero. Um, it's be like x mod m equals to y mod m, but you don't know that x mod k is equal to y mod k yet, so to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, huh. So, yeah, so we know only that that class of sd to the 
the Q of gamma 1 plus gamma 2 is equal to the class of gamma 1 plus gamma 2. Uh, I need to show that, yeah, so these, these two different, that because they're equal here, it means they're also equal in this uh, other class. So the one on the one hand, we've got the classes in the singular what well, the singular chains over x, as opposed to the sum of the singular change in that chains in x one and x two. Mm -hmm. And the so the so the class is in the singular chains of x, but you need to know it is in the sum of the singular chains of x one and x two. I guess that's what left to show. Yeah. yeah. By 6.8, huh. let's apply to the inclusion map. So we have Sn, Xi, Sn, Xi. And that's about the. Yeah, just by Sd. Then we have this inclusion. Uh, maybe I should use I. Um, I don't know what to call it. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we have this, and that tells us that um, this is this can mean so. Inclusion. Maybe I should call it KI. That's yeah, that's the way. Um, Mid index, I like it. <laughs> All right, and it says hence SD. Carries the sum of this might not be the most proper notation. So it maps it into itself. Moreover, the contracting homotopy. Let's see. Sorry. Well, yeah. So we have. So we have these TNs from SN of X. If you remember working through those last time. Restricts to the contracting homotopies. These were the T's that appeared in the proof that yeah. the uh, homotopy was. What's the identity? I'm sorry. Yeah, that subdivision didn't monkey with the homology. Right, I guess. yeah. Okay, therefore, gamma 1 minus. Let's use some technical terminology. SD to the Q of gamma 1 equals T prime delta plus delta T prime. Just Good. So we have a 4. Yeah, because S to the Q is, um, the induced map is the same as the identity, and that's what this shows. Um, and the same with 2. Okay. Um, 
therefore just adding both sides, I think. Gamma 1 plus gamma 2 minus SD to the cube. Gamma 1 plus gamma 2 is equal to T prime delta gamma 1 plus You can just start another line. Plus T prime prime delta gamma 2 plus the boundary of T prime plus T prime gamma 1 plus T prime prime gamma 2. Okay, but. T prime prime boundary of gamma 2 is equal to T of boundary gamma 1 plus gamma 2. Since we said that it restricts, uh, this one restricts to both of these. Mm -hmm. um, therefore, it's equal to Gamma plus gamma two is a cycle, and because boundary of t prime, yeah, t prime gamma one plus t prime prime gamma two is boundary for obvious reasons. That's the boundary of the of the sum. The boundary in the direct pro in the direct sum yeah. context that you're looking at too. In other words, the square bracket equivalences rather than the, the class mm -hmm. notation equivalence. Yeah. So that tells us that yeah. this is equal to. This is so crazy. <laughs> I mean, and this is all one big. Pr I mean, really, what he's done, this whole discussion, right? Like, goodness gracious, I mean, how many pages has this been going on? Right? Because the stuff you were doing last time, and I think even the time before, is all part of this proof. Right. I mean, this is... Very elaborate. It's all... Right. So this, this is the equality that we wanted, and therefore that means it's equal to zero. Okay. <laughs> Having completed the proof of excision, we now accept the mayer viatoris theorem and the calculation of the homology groups of spheres. Time for more homology. Shall we accept them, huh? Yes, it is true. Burr with a nine. If you record two useful facts. Uh, let me save you. Let's let's read these facts together and right. save you the statement of these ones. Right. Yeah. So I'll 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 read lemma six point six point one eight. This is let x be the union of the interior of x one and the interior of x two. Then if you look at i sub j, the um, inclusion from the intersection of x one and x two to x j um, for j equals one and two. And if you look at the class of z, which is in the homology nth homology of x1 intersect x2. Okay, given all that, if the n plus 1 homology of x is equal to 0, then the class of z is equal to 0 if and only if the induced, let's see, what is that thing, i star, how do I read that? The induced map? Yeah, induced, induced map. map the, first, the first inclusions induced, induced map of class c is 0, and the second inclusions induced map acting on class c is 0. So to show something's a cycle in the total space, all you got to do is show that it's a cycle both with respect to the, f the first and the x1 and x2, basically. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Well, the proof that's really not very hard. Oh, I'm sorry. If you're looking forward to doing that proof, you can. But. 
Um, it's diagram stuff. Yeah. And then lemma, lemma 6.19, assume that x is the union of x1 interior, x2 interior, each n cycle, and each n cycle z and x is homologous to a cycle of the form gamma 1 plus gamma 2, where gamma is in the n chains over xi. Moreover, if d is a mapping from the nth homology of x to the n minus 1 homology of the intersection of x1 and x2 is the connecting homomorphism in the mayer viator sequence, then d of the class of z is equal to d of the class of gamma 1 plus gamma 2, which is, by the way, also equal to the class of the boundary of gamma 1. Hey, what makes gamma 1 so special? <laughs> What's that? Could you see there? Oh. Remark. Of course, one may interchange x1 and x2. All right, well, there you go. So, apparently, one is not so special after all. Okay, huh. no, that's, that's just a lot of playing around with diagrams. Another diagram. I guess diagram chasing would be very relaxing, but I am eager for you to talk about the applications yes, of Euclidean yes, space. Yes, so. interesting application. <clears throat> we will forge ahead. And it says, recall that if you have a homomorphism from Z to Z, uh -huh. um, Then it's multiplication by some integer m. Okay. Where m is h of 1. Okay, so we start with kind of like generalizing um, what we did before with the, what was it called when we were studying S1? Uh, DO degree for the yeah, one the number. Degree, right? number yeah, okay. Okay, so if you have f from Sn to Sn. At the start of this all, I told Bill, I was like, yeah, I'm going to have Nathan do one week, I'm going to have Daniel do another week, and Bill's like, whoa, 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 um, that's not fair, like, he's, I'm gonna have, I'll have him do one one chapter, and then I'll have him do the next chapter, and Bill's like, I was like, whoa, whoa, not all chapters in that book are created equal. <laughs> <laughs> There's some very bad deals and very good deals in there. <laughs> if you're <coughs> aiming to be lazy. This is the wrong chapter to present, for sure. Agree? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of nuts. Okay, so it has Sorry. degree n. If its induced map is multiplication by n, hmm. remember that hn of sn is equal to z, or is perfect to z. So, yeah. Huh. So this is the definition. Okay, and so recalling what we looked at with the winding numbers with S1, and we're going to show that it's actually the same thing. So, here on 6.20. Uh, if f from S1 to S1, then the degree of f, how we defined it in chapter 3, is equal to d of f, how we have just defined it. Okay, proof. <laughs> kind of going all over the place using the Herbert map. How do you pronounce it? Okay, so if you recall, we like very briefly mentioned the Hurwitz. Hurwitz. I don't know. Hurwitz. Hurwitz map. Uh, the which mapped from uh, pi one of x x naught to h one of x um, by of f plus of f equal to the class in the homology sense of f eta, where eta is kind of like this natural um, mapping from the one simplex to i. Okay. All right, and so we have this commuting diagram by exercise 4.13, so we have pi 1 of S1, 1, S star, and we're going to write tildes, I forgot to mention this, end rate of 0. 
so it's not a different, there's no difference. That's one. <laughs> and these are not the same. <laughs> uh, F star, this is <laughs> yeah. The home plates for homology. Could put a could put a tilt on now. Nah. <laughs> Unless you really want me to. I mean, you you do what you want. I'll, I'll stick with this. And if we get confused, I apologize. Um, but let me get a chair. So we have my one. This one is isomorphic to Z. Ability. Uh, that means that phi is an isomorphism by theorem on theorem four point one half. Why don't we go back to theorem four point one one half and I know what that was? Oh, oh, right. Um, Because it's abelian, uh, so if you remember theorem 4.29, it said that um, pi 1 of x, x naught uh, mod the commutator subgroup of it is isomorphic to h1 of x. But since it's abelian, the commutator is just going to be uh, 0. So. exercise 3.14 which says that one may view f star from pi 1 s1 1 to pi 1 s1 f of 1 as multiplication multiplication by degree of f It says the degree, so exercise 3.14 says that the degree of f to the m of the degree of f to the m is equal to the m times degree of f. And so a closed path. And so yeah, so if F's a closed path then uh, so here F of one would be like these F's aren't the same thing, but it does get that. Right. I'm gonna move on. Uh, to a lot of cool, huh. lot of cool uh, properties. So we have so we have F this has nothing in particular to do with excision, does it? No. No. I mean, except I think that we're going to be using excision for... Yeah, we definitely are. Um, yeah. yeah. That's right. But this, this particular thing is almost like a corollary to exercise 3.14. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't... Yeah, we don't... And yeah, the, we don't really need excision for this. And the theorem which linked homotopy to homology. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just we're going to use this and excision to prove uh, neat stuff. Okay. So, uh, SN to SN is continuous. Then we have one, that the hmm. degree of G composed with F, the degree of G times degree of F. So it's just the degree of the identity on SN. So this is equal to one. It tells us that f constant that the degree of f is zero. Well, I could 
If F is hot topic to G, then D of F is equal to D of G. And find says that F homotopy equivalence. Then D of F is equal to plus or minus one. Okay. And it says all of these uh, follow from the fact that HN is a functor. Um, do you want to go through these proofs? Yeah, I can. Sure. Okay, so let's uh, go until we run out of time, I guess. Yeah, that's fine. I think you'll. Probably need one more day to finish this up, mm -hmm. if I had to guess. Right. Yeah, I would think so. Um, Alright, so to find, so we're looking to show that the degree of g composed with f is equal to the degree of g times the degree of f, so we need to look at the uh, induced function, induced mapping of f of g. Um, the class of c is going to be equal to, because it's a, fun, because, uh, it's a functor. We have so it's G star composed with F star class of C, uh, which is equal to G composed with um, D of F class of C. Right. Um, which is equal to D of G D of F class of C. You guys see that? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you guys can just skip this up. Okay. Okay, and then we have. So, right, so the induced mapping of the identity is just the identity, and so its degree is just one. That's for the second one. Sure. Yeah, I'm not even going to do that. Third one, let's see. I'm going to go to 4, maybe. Okay. Here we have... Oh, that's not easy. I think. Yeah. Which says that their degrees are the same. Should we get there? says that if F is homotopy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. if F is an equivalence, then um, F is uh, homotopy of the identity, which means that, or not, let's see, not an identity. It means that F stars an isomorphism. And the only isomorphisms on C are multiplication by 1 or minus 1, so. Yeah. <laughs> That plays a surprisingly interesting role in number theory. You know, so Which you one? get down to something squared is equal to one, the only solution is plus or minus one in the integers. Like, I was surprised how, when I taught number theory, it was weird how important that was in their various places, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I'm easily amused. <clears throat> okay, and it says, neat thing, uh, we can prove that SN is not contractible um, using degrees uh, because otherwise